Take your Bibles, John chapter number 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for these good testimonies. Lord, we do have a lot to be thankful for. And God, we are thankful for our church family. We are thankful that on this Christmas night, the world is celebrating tinsel and, and lights and gifts and, and many of them now facing debt. Lord, we can come and celebrate the wonder of Christmas who paid our debt and who made a way for us to be saved. Lord, thank you for this grand privilege. Thank you for the Word of God. I pray that you would continue to orchestrate the furtherance of events in this service. I pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray, as Brother Clint has already prayed, if there's anybody here unsaved, I pray they'll get saved before it's everlasting too late. And what greater day to be saved than on Christmas when they can receive the greatest gift ever given, the gift of salvation. Now, Father, have your will and way now, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In these verses, we find the providence of Christ. Many believe that Jesus just began some 2,000 years ago, but we find the Word of God clarifies that. Verse number 1, it says, In the beginning. When was that? That was way back to when it all started. When was that? That's the Alpha. There's never been a time when he wasn't. In the beginning was the Word. That is capitalized. That is talking of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the living Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We find that he's been since the beginning, and that he's always been God. We see his providence. He just uh, didn't become a God. He wasn't a fallen angel. He has always been God. We not only see his providence, we see uh, the position of Christ. Look in verse number 2. The same was in the beginning with God. We find that he was not only in the beginning with God, he was the same with God. We find that he is uh, part of the Godhead. We worship a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Uh, they are three in one. They bear record in heaven, and they agree in one. It's one Godhead with three personalities. You say, explain that? I can't. Uh, it is far above my pay grade and far above my intelligence. Uh, but the Bible makes it clear uh, uh, our Godhead is three uh, 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 different entities in one, three personalities in one, uh, and I am thankful for the triune God. Uh, we find that they are all as powerful as one another. They are all in one another, and they all agree in one another. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 we find uh, uh, the Father uh, is given the position uh, uh, of authority. We find the Son was given the position of sacrifice and becoming Savior. And the Holy Ghost is given the position uh, uh, of the heart in order to bring it all together. And my dear friends, uh, what a blessing to be a part of the family of God. Uh, we see the providence of God. We see the, or the providence of Christ. We see the position of Christ. But we also find in these verses, verses the production of Christ. Verse 3. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. He made everything. He made the stars and the sun. He made the earth and the moon. He made uh, the sea. He made uh, everything. He formed man out of the dust of the earth. Made man in his own image. He breathed into man the breath of life. He made all the animals. He made everything. There's nothing that's been made that he didn't make it. We see his production. Many times we think of Jesus. We think of him being a lesser part of the Godhead. No. He's just the part that we got to see full of grace and truth. And can I say, not only do we see his production and his position and his providence, but notice the power of Christ. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But we see the power of Christ. He was the life and the light. Now notice what it says that the uh, darkness comprehended it not. Uh, that's much more than darkness couldn't understand him. And when we were dead in trespasses and sin, we were in darkness. And we did not understand the things of God. We didn't seek after the things of God. Mm, but it's much more than just not being able to understand. It means that darkness could not overtake him could not comprehend him, could not overcome him. He overcome darkness. And we are thankful for that. Well, I, I want to give you a little thought where it speaks about verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I want to speak to just a little bit tonight on the light from God. The light from God. We were alienated from God. We were in darkness. Jesus Christ came some 2,000 years ago, and he came to bring life and light to our darkened understanding and to our sinful world and our sinful nature. And my dear friends, in Jesus Christ we have eternal life, and in him we have the light of understanding. And so I want to speak a little bit on the light from God. We find here in this verse, and we find throughout the Bible, the person of the light. In John chapter number 8 and verse number 12, the Bible says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We find that Jesus Christ is the light. He's the person of the light that came from God. God could have chose to send it however he wanted to, but he chose to send it in himself and in the person of Christ. Uh, Christ came into this world, born of a virgin. He wrapped himself in flesh uh, uh, to bring light to you and I. He is the person of light. He is the one, as we said there in verse 14, that dwelt among us, uh, that was wrapped in flesh, uh, full of grace and truth to bring light to this dark and hideous world. Can I say not much has changed in 2,000 years? There's still a lot of people in darkness. They're searching for the light, but they're searching in all the wrong avenues. And the only way you'll ever see the light is you'll have to come face to face with Jesus Christ. He is the person of the light. In John 9, 5, Jesus said this, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He came as the person of light. John 12, 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Notice he didn't say whosoever believeth in me must believe on me. We live in a day and age where modern Christianity has become a plight of decisionism. If you'll just believe, if you'll just decide to make Jesus your Lord, it's much more than decisionism. It's much more than believing in Him. The devils believe in Him and they fear and tremble. You must believe on Him through the very avenue that Brother Clint prayed a minute ago through repentance and faith. You must turn from your direction, turn to Him in His glorious light uh, and put your faith and trust in the finished works of Calvary and Him as your Lord and Savior in order to see the light. My dear friends, until... He turns that light on in your heart, you'll be in darkness. And he'll do that when you put your faith and trust in him. He is the person of light. No one will ever come to God by, without coming to him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the person of light. We're thankful for that. Can I say there was the prophecy of the light? In Luke 1, when uh, the angel is giving uh, uh, Mary some information concerning what's about to transpire in her life, her being a virgin and 
her going to have a child and call his name Jesus. He said this in Luke 1, 79, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Uh, when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to be circumcised uh, to the temple on the eighth day of his birth, after his birth, uh, 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 Simeon the prophet uh, prophesied this. He said, he'll be a light to lighten the Gentiles uh, and the glory of thy people Israel. Uh, uh, we could go in Isaiah, we could go through uh, uh, Proverbs and Psalms and throughout the Old Testament to show you, even in Micah, that he was coming to bring light. Uh, and we are thankful for the prophecy of light, the prophecy of the person of light, and that he would come and bring light into this world. But my dear friends, none of that matters until you realize that you are personally responsible for the light. Young people, you'll not go to heaven because your grandparents or your parents went to heaven. You have to personally come to Jesus yourself. You have to do business with the light yourself uh, a lot of people are trusting in religion religion will not save anybody every individual must come face to face with Jesus Christ every individual must realize it was their sin that brought him into this world it was their sin that caused him to go to the cross uh, and they are responsible to God for their own sin their very sin is transaction of, uh, 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 of wickedness against God himself and God sent the light to redeem them from their sin. The Bible says this. Look over in John chapter 3. Just flip over a couple, verse, a couple pages. You must see that you're personally responsible concerning the light. In John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You know why some of your family don't like coming to church? Their deeds are evil. You know why some of your family wants you to quit telling them about Jesus? Because their deeds are evil. You know why some people don't like preaching? Some people don't like godly singing? Why some people don't like the Bible? It's because their deeds are evil and the Bible, the Lord Jesus, and godly singing reproves them of their evil deeds. But those who've come to the light, oh, they love the things of the light and their works are wrought in that. They show that they were wrought in God because they have come to the light. But you have a personal responsibility concerning the light. When you were dead in trespasses and sins, you uh, were personally responsible to God, and you had to come to Him and repent to become saved. But after you're saved, you still have a responsibility to the light. God just didn't save you because He was bored. And our salvation isn't like our Christmas decorations. You just take them down and put them up for a season. No, they're to shine every day of the year. Hmm? The Bible says this in Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We're to walk as children of light because we're personally responsible for the light. Philippians 2.15 That ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. How's the world ever going to see a difference if we don't shine? Can I say the indictment against the church age today is people have a hard time telling the difference between those that are Christians and those that aren't? God help us to shine as lights. Hmm? The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9, 
But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, unholy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My dear friends, we ought to shine as lights. Listen, how you raise your children, that's, up, that's between you and God. But I know how we raised ours. We raised ours to be fosters. And there were certain things that we did not uh, tolerate, nor would we accept from them being fosters. Just wouldn't intolerate. No, that, that isn't becoming a foster child. You're not going to act that way. You're not going to go there. You're not going to be a part of that. Why? Because of what? No, because that's what we expected. Can I say God is much more stringent? We are Christian. There are certain things that God expects from us and certain things that God has laid forth for us. And most importantly, we are to shine as lights. The old kerosene lanterns, when they burnt long enough, they'd get soot inside. You had to clean them up every now and then in order to see the light. Well, too many of God's youngins are walking around with their lanterns all dirty and they're not shining forth the light that they should be shining forth. Can I say just by you being here tonight, letting your family know you're coming to church on Christmas night, you were a shining light to your family. Most people don't understand that. Now it amazes me the religious world don't have a problem with it. it amazes me that uh, Catholics have Mass on Christmas, and Christmas Eve, uh, uh, the cults all have uh, 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 all kinds of services on Christmas Eve, all kinds of things going on, except Bible believers or so-called Bible believers. Just by you saying, I'm going to church, you were a testimony. You shined as a light to your family. And I thank you for that. Hmm? Thank God for some that still want to shine. The Bible says this in 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Can I say, if you're walking in the light, you have fellowship with him? So like Brother Rod testified to a minute ago. But can I say, when you have fellowship with him, and if the rest of his youngins have fellowship with him, guess what? We have fellowship one with another. You know why some people don't want to come to church? Their fellowship's wrong. Fellowship with him and fellowship with the body of Christ. Huh? I'm glad we can come together and fellowship and enjoy one another's company and just have a good time whether we're in church or out of church because when our fellowship's right with God and our fellowship's right with one another, why wouldn't we want to hang out? Hmm? It's all part of being in the light. We see the person of the light. We see the prophecy of the light. We see the personal responsibility concerning the light. But as Christians, we're to pass on the light. And the Bible makes it clear, Matthew 5, the great sermon on the mount. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Now Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He went on to say, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But guess what? He's not in the world anymore. But he looks to his followers. And he says, now, you're to carry the torch of the light, and you're to pass it on. He says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, any time you do something for the cause of Christ, men take count of that. And people do know your good deeds. And they will testify to your good deeds that it embarks on your Christianity. They know that. Religion teaches you need to do good. Well, when they see you doing good, they realize it's because you named the name of Christ. They see your good deeds. God help us to pass on the light. Let others see Jesus in us. Let others see compassion, kindness, love, joy, gentleness, meekness, temperance, those things that are the gifts of the Holy Ghost. God help us to pass that on. All those things the world needs a whole lot more of. And God help us to pass on the light. And then lastly we see the postulation or the contention for the light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3, the Bible says, But if our gospel be hid, 
it is hid to them that are, uh, that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There's a great contention. The devil works overtime trying to blind the minds of those lest they would see the glorious light of Christ. And the devil works real hard on Christians to destroy your testimony so you don't have any light to shine. Because so many are in darkness. And so the real battle is for us to be in fellowship with God and to let our light shine. And we must contend with the flesh, the world, and the devil on a regular basis in order to let our light shine. We must examine ourselves. Brother Larry Seals preached on Sunday morning. On a regular basis, make sure our light is still shining. We must continually take notice. Am I being the vessel God would have me to be? Because there are so many around me that need Jesus Christ. The Bible says we're written epistles, known and read of all men. That means when you're shining for Jesus, they're reading that. But that means when you're not shining, they're reading that too. So no matter what state we find ourselves in, we must choose to overcome so that they see Jesus in us always. God help us to shine as lights. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.